Hello and welcome to my presentation on polarization. And I'm Bernard Taylor and this is Fez Physics. There I am, but let's get into this. Electromagnetic waves, as the name suggests, have two components at right angles to each other. An electric field component and a magnetic field component. And with polarization, we're only talking about the electric field, the change in the electric field. Let's forget about the magnetic field component for the moment. And my diagram here shows the direction and magnitude of the electric field vector as it's changing. The direction of the electric field, the electric field vector, is this in the same direction as the force on a small positive test charge. You do something about electric fields, I'm sure, later in your course. So look. If we're talking about the polarized microwaves incident upon a dipolar water molecule, a dipolar water molecule with its plus and minus is shown there, then the water molecule will start to oscillate. In other words, the water will heat up. And of course, isn't that what happens to water molecules in microwave ovens? But there is another consideration here. The frequency of the microwaves and the natural frequency of oscillation of the water are the same and we have resonance. In unpolarized light, the electric field vectors will oscillate in all different planes as they're coming towards us. And we see that in the diagram on the left. But with polarized light, plane polarized light, the electric field vector oscillates in only one plane. Here, the oscillation is in the vertical plane. It could have been in the horizontal plane. And we have to be prepared to draw these two diagrams in an exam. Now, here, we see my plane polarized wave getting through the slits in my polarizing filter, the, uh, the gaps between my fingers uh, are representing that, that passage through the polarizing filter. And the plane of polarization for the top diagram is in the same plane as the wave. But on the bottom diagram, the plane, polari plane polarized wave does not get through my polarizing filter. The plane of polarization of the filter is at 90 degrees to the wave. Now, this is a simple model that I'm using. In reality, things are a little bit more complicated. So, top diagram, the electric field vector oscillates in the vertical plane and will pass through the polarizing filter. The bottom diagram, the electric field vector is at right angles to the plane of polarization of the filter and will not pass through. But if we rotate the polarizing filter through 90 degrees, then the wave will pass through. Now, here I've got two polarizing filters on the left, and the, on the left, the planes of polarization of both filters are in parallel. So the the plane polarized light passes through one filter and then through the other, and we can see what we can see. But on the right hand side, we're interested in the area of overlap. The planes of polarization of the two filters are at right angles to each other. So plane polarized light passes through one filter, but not through the second. So what we see is an area of darkness uh, where the two filters overlap. And here in my very simplified model is my representation of crossed polarizing filters. Now, here's an exam question. Iceland spar is a crystalline form of calcite. An incident ray of unpolarized light is separated into two plane polarized rays by a sample of this Iceland spar. The two rays of polarized light follow different paths. Okay, we're asked to explain the difference between polarized and unpolarized light. And here we see my use of those two different diagrams. You need to be able to say something like this and use these two diagrams. Now I'm also adding 
that these oscillations are at right angles to the direction of travel of the wave or the direction in which the wave is carrying energy. And there's an additional point um, that only transverse waves can be polarized, not longitudinal waves. When writing is viewed through a calcite crystal, such as Iceland Spa, we see a double image, and that's what I'm showing here. If we look at the double writing through a polarizing filter and rotate the filter through 90 degrees and back again, then one image is seen, and then the other, and then the original one. Light passing through the crystal is split into two rays. The planes of polarization of the two rays are perpendicular to each other. It's an interesting effect, which is known as double refraction. Now, let's read this first question, the first part of the question, I should say. If you look at, into a fish pond on a bright sunny day, you sometimes cannot see the fish because of the glare of light reflected off the surface. When the sunlight is reflected off the surface of the water, it's partially plain polarized. Okay, part A very much as we saw before. But part B, we're asked to explain how Polaroid sunglasses can enable the fish to be seen. Well, light reflected from the surface, the glare, as we might call it, is partially plain polarized. The sunglasses have polarizing filters, which are at 90 degrees to this plain polarized light, and cut it out. This lets you see light coming directly from the fish, which is not polarized, much more clearly. And we're asked to just state why sound waves cannot be polarized. Yes, sound waves are longitudinal waves and only transverse waves can be polarized. Now, on the left-hand side, I see, we see um, a lamp, and in front of it are two polarizing filters. But on the left-hand side, they're in parallel. But in the middle, they're crossed polarizing filters. And some materials become what we call optically active when they experience stress. When the plastic ruler is placed between the two polarizing filters at right angles to each other, and then twisted, stress, a pattern of colored stress lines can be seen. This is what we're seeing in the middle photograph. Some plastics are under stress when they cool after being manufactured, which is what we're seeing on the right hand side. And incidentally, you can sometimes see stress patterns in car windscreens when viewed through a polarizing filter, sometimes even without using a polarizing filter. It just depends on conditions. Now, my polarimeter here, Let's look at the left hand side. There's a door which is closed during operation to prevent light from outside interfering with what's happening. At the bottom, there's a small lamp inside a compartment. Uh, the eyepiece contains a polarizing filter, and this can be rotated. And there's a scale so we can, and a marker so we can see, we can measure how much, how many degrees that eyepiece has been rotated through. In the middle we see a glass tube with a transparent bottom which contains a sugar solution. Okay and plain polarized light will pass straight up this glass tube to the eyepiece. But hold on, why is that light plain, plain polarized light? Well because at the bottom we see we've got a polarizing filter. In fact, of course, we've got two polarizing filters, one in the eyepiece and one down below. Okay, let's bear that in mind. Because this question is part of an exam question, says when polarized light passes through a sugar solution, the plane of polarization rotates through an angle. Explain how to measure this angle of rotation. Well, I've drawn on the left a simplified diagram and I would have got two marks for this. There's an eye looking down at the eyepiece polarizing filter, we've got the sugar sample, we've got the polarizing filter in a fixed position down at the bottom and then we've got the lamp that we didn't see because it was uh, sealed away from us in the uh, previous uh, 
photograph. So first of all, we use water in the tube and note the angle of the eyepiece filter to get a minimum, i.e. darkness. It won't be quite black, but it'll be the darkest we can get it. And the reason for that is that no polarizing filters are 100% efficient. Okay, we replace the water with our sugar solution. We then turn the eyepiece filter until we again get a minimum, i.e. darkness. And then we calculate the difference in the angles indicated on the eyepiece of the polarizing filter. And that's job done. But the angle of rotation of a sugar solution depends on the strength of the sugar solution. So we might be in an experiment, we might be uh, doing an experiment where, where we have different strengths of sugar solution and we relate the rotation of the angle of polarization to the strength of the sugar solution. So remember that. And I've again indicated at the bottom that rotation of the plane of polarization is known as optical activity and materials showing this effect are said to be optically active. Now this classic experiment from the old Nuffield A-level physics textbook uh, shows a light source, a lamp, with light passing between the barriers into this plastic tank with cloudy water in it. It's made cloudy, but it's slightly cloudy really, by putting a few drops of milk into it. And the water in the tank is observed through a polarizing filter from the positions shown, A, B, and C. And we rotate the polarizing filter while we're looking through it. What we find is interesting. Light reflected off the milk particles in positions A and B is found to be plane polarized, or at least partially plane polarized. Light transmitted straight through the tank from position C is not plane polarized. And we see a similar effect when viewing the blue sky through a polarizing filter, an activity that I would strongly encourage you to do. Now, what do we have here? We have um, a gigahertz radio transmitter uh, on the left. It's a, a dipole aerial that it has. And we have a receiving uh, dipole. And in the position shown, we'd get a minimum. But if we then rotate the receiving dipole, through 90 degrees so that it's parallel to the transmitting dipole, the meter would give us a maximum. This shows that the radio waves are plane polarized. Incidentally, have you ever looked at TV aerials and wondered about their design? Why does the aerial have perhaps nine or ten elements in parallel? Is it something to do with those uh, radio waves being plane polarized? And the answer, of course, is yes. But that's moving beyond the syllabus, beyond the specification. Now, another type of question deals with liquid crystal displays. Now, let's read through this very carefully. A liquid crystal display uses a series of segments to form letters and numbers on a screen. The construction of a display segment is shown. And we see we've got a lower polarizing filter. We've got a liquid crystal. We've got an upper polarizing filter. And we've got the screen, which, of course, is what we look at. And coming from below, we've got some unpolarized white light. OK bullet points, and I make no apology for going through this. This could be an important exam question for you. Unpolarized white light passes through the lower polarizing filter and becomes plain polarized. When there's no potential difference across the liquid crystal, 
the molecules in the liquid crystal will rotate the plane of polarization by 90 degrees. Light then passes through the upper polarizing filter and appears on the screen. When a PD is applied across the liquid crystal, the molecules no longer rotate the plane of polarization. The light will not pass through the upper polarizing filter and the screen appears dark. An interesting effect. Okay, make sure you're familiar with this effect. We're asked to describe what is meant by plane polarized light and isn't this very similar to what we've met before? The oscillations are in one plane only. I've drawn a little diagram on the right, which is perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer, i.e. perpendicular to the direction in which the wave is traveling. And we're asked to explain the angle of polarization of the upper polarizing filter relative to the lower polarizing filter. You may need to go back to this. The fact is that the filters are at 90 degrees to each other. If the plane of polarization of light is rotated by 90 degrees when it passes through the liquid crystal with no PD across it, then it will pass through the upper filter. Okay, so light. Okay. Now, there's another type of question, uh, often a multiple choice question, which asks about the angle that we might move um, a polarizing filter through. So it says here, polarimeters are used to measure the degree of rotation of the plane of polarization by solutions. Yes, we've talked about that already. The diagram represents the parts of a polarimeter. The polarizer and analyzer are both polarizing filters. And I've emphasized that on the right-hand side. They're just names for polarizing filters. Look at the diagram. In an experiment, we're led to the conclusion that the solution had rotated the plane of polarization of the light by 35 degrees. Okay, which of the following rotations of the plane of polarization could also have been a correct conclusion? Well, of course, the rotation, 35 degrees, could also to 35 degrees to position A could also have been by a further 180 degrees to position B. And of course, in that case, the angle would be 180 plus 35, which is 250 degrees. Uh, and I would encourage you, if you're not sure about it, just to sketch little diagrams like this as you go through these multiple choice questions. Now, as we come to the end of this presentation, um, research is continuing on the degree and direction of polarization in cosmic microwave background radiation. Uh, this is certainly, it's thought, going to give many clues about the processes very, very soon after the Big Bang. And my diagram here, the white lines show the polarization of the oldest light. The warmest areas are shown by red spots and the coolest area by blue spots. It's only worth looking at, although it's not on your specification as such. Again, a similar um, point, it's not in your specification, but you might be interested to find out more about Viking sunstones, which it's thought may have helped the Vikings to navigate in cloudy or overcast weather, to find the direction of the sun, or to realize where the sun uh, was when they couldn't actually see it. A bit of research for you. And finally, I mentioned this earlier, view the blue sky and clouds through a polarizing filter. Look on your left and your right and above with your back to the sun. Don't look directly at the sun, of course. Rotate the filter and what do you see? I'm hoping that what you'll see is something akin to the experiment with the plastic uh, tank with the few drops of milk in it. Think about that carefully. And thank you very much. That's Fez Physics and 
keep working.